Or is it picking up? There we go. There we go. Woohoo! All right. It is Lent, and therefore we are in the penitential order, which is on page 351 in the prayer book. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy and forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book oh, is this working? A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen, and then chapter three, verses one through seven. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in of the garden, but not of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coughs for themselves. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 32. We'll say this together. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. Happy are they whom the Lord implies no guilt, and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgive me the guilt of sin. sin. Therefore, I am faithful with their prayers to you in the time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For those who have many, for if the many died through brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus was baptized, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. God and serve only him.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Two and a half weeks ago, on February 8th, a small collection, well, I don't know how small, a, a gathering of students took place in a college chapel outside of Lexington, Kentucky. And in the course of that worship service, there was a praise band who stopped to take a break, and there was a little pause in the worship. And while the band was out on their break, some students remained in the chapel telling stories to each other in a form of testimony, and they began to sing songs spontaneously. Other students who were within earshot heard this and began to regather in this worship space. And before you knew it, the space was full of energy and the spirit was made manifest in palpable ways. From that particular experience of the spirit, word spread around the state and in fact around the country and the world and what has become known as the Asbury Revival was off and running. Thousands of people made their way to the university and were wanting to be part of that experience of feeling the presence and being renewed by the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of people have been talking about this revival of being so kind of necessary and important and what a testament it is to the presence of God that this particular thing took place. And it wasn't until midweek this last week, two weeks after it began, that the university finally said, enough, time to go home. And the students themselves said, we need to get back to our kind of daily rhythm. But the fact that so many people gathered there, went to seek this experience of the presence of the Spirit, has been attributed to the presence of the Spirit. And I'm not saying that's not true, but I think there's something else going on there too. When you go in search of something, it's because you're hungry. I believe the people who went to Asbury to taste the spirit, to be part of that experience of revival, did so because their souls and their spirits were hungry. And I believe that each of us in this space and others we know and love outside of these walls have a similar hunger. It may not be a hunger for God, it may be a hunger for relationship, it may be for a hunger for purpose, but there's hunger within each and every one of us. Is Jesus coming for you? Our anxiety, our curiosity, our wondering, our confusion, our withdrawal, and they will be aware that something is afoot and they will notice that you are going through an experience and they will pay attention and tend to you when the time comes and you will be ministered to by angels. But it's that hunger, it's that hunger that I want us to pay attention to today. It's no accident that this is the first lesson every year in Lent, a telling of it, a version of it. The first Sunday of Lent always talks about Jesus' baptism and his time out in the desert and how he comes to terms with the ministry he is about to engage back in the world. It's about exposing ourselves to God. It's about recognizing our vulnerability and saying it's time to shed all the pretense those things around us that cloak us and buffer us from the things that are important. It's time to get real with the Spirit of God and walk with Christ and the presence of the Spirit, the companionship of the Spirit into that place of wilderness. Now, if you've ever gone into the outdoor wilderness, 
You prepare for it, right? Either you know you're going to be hiking, and so you develop some stamina. You may know you're gone for a stretch of time, so you make sure you have plenty of water. You've got food. You've got sunscreen, sunglasses, that you're dressed accordingly, and that you've got really good foot gear. You go prepared, in other words. And if necessary, you have a map, or you know how to follow a trail. My point is, we never venture out entirely unprepared. There are times in life when we get caught unawares and things are going on around us and we are not well equipped to respond to the situation at hand. But even then, God finds a way to help us through. God reaches out a hand through a friend or a out of the desert ready to go. He may not have felt quite ready, but we wouldn't know it from the testimonies of those who witnessed what came next. He went out into villages and towns and preached. He taught. He broke open the word of God so that we might hear it anew. And everyone who came in touch with him, who encountered him, found their life in some way changed. What hunger attends you today? What kind of companionship of the spirit will suit you best as you leave this place and go back into the world to deal with the things that are present for you? How might God minister to you through the angels of your life? Might you need to let someone know that you're about to embark on a journey into the wilderness so they can keep an eye out for you? Or like in a marathon, get ready to hand you that water bottle as you run past a station. Where is your hunger? Wherever that is, trust that God is in that space, that the Spirit is ready and waiting to accompany you down the road through the journey about which you are to embark. And know that in the fullness of time, you too will be ministered to by angels, that your hunger will be met and your life will be different. In all ways, God is present to us and for us and sees us fully down the road into the deeper heart of God. And that, my friends, is how Lent begins. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in reciting the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from, from the Father for my in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations to the waves of ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through mission, especially African, Africa, Amer excuse me, Africa Education Partnership. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Lisa Pyle, Nancy TZ, the Van Neal family, Ginger Marsh, Rose, the Perrin and Lewis families, Lauren, Roger, Marilyn, Ann S., Clay, Mark Moran, Renee, Amber Birkin, Kirk, Devon Walters, Rose Marie, Lee, and Malachi Roach and family, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy, the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Give to all of you the departed eternal rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your prayers for members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families, especially Michael Friel and Richard Nunez Jr., who are deployed, as well as Kenneth Fraley Jr., Jason Dorval, and Ryan Waite. For victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially the people of Ukraine, Turkey, and Syria. For groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially the Hindu community group. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for our elected lay re leaders, the ministry of the ushers, for parish members Donna in Domenico, Margaret Jackson, and Patricia Jennings, and for Lisa Pyle and Jamie Barber, who are celebrating birthdays this week. For what else are we thankful? Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love. Through him who lives and reigns with you, and so rule their minds and guide their counsels that in all things they may seek your glory and promote the mission of your church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of God and of his congregation, I commission you, Mark Bell, as Senior Warden, Eric Barber as Junior Warden, Barbara Hoff as Treasurer, Lisa Pyle as Clerk, Peter Brim and Tara Fornuto as members, Dick Hubney and Ingrid Menon as members of the vestry in this parish. Please join me. Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, assemble the elders, and sanctify the congregation. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Diane, you need to be up here. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit presided at the Council of the Apostles to guide them in all knowledge and truth, be present with the delegate and author the delegate of this parish. In the passions of debate, give them a complexities of the issues, give them clear minds, and in the moments of decision, give them courageous hearts. 
guide them in all things to seek only your glory and the good for of your church through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of God and of his congregation, I commission you, Diane Fornudo, as convention delegate in this parish, and Martha, who's not here, as diocesan convention alternate delegate in this parish. Thank you very much for your service. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Continue with a great thanksgiving found on page 361 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
to shape to your will a perfect After supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
using the prayer of thanksgiving found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. In your bulletin, a handy dandy little form that if you have not already filled out, you're welcome to write in your favorite songbook pieces. I thank those of you who have done so already. There are some clear favorites among our group and then some that are more isolated, you know, one hit wonders. We'll call out to let you know this. The other thing is that in the songbook, um, it doesn't include all the things we have also incorporated, like 10,000 Reasons, that's not in the songbook, but we sing it. In Christ Alone, it's not in the songbook, but we sing it, which is two weeks from RSVP link that we use for worship services. So um, you ought to be able to find one of those links within an email, or I think even on our website, you can find one of those links. So just use that to RSVP so we know how much pizza we need to prep. And finally, I think that's it. There's an announcement in there about Martha. Um, anything else that I've forgotten? Okay, we're delighted you're here today. I forgot to welcome people at the very beginning. I got so flustered by the fact that it's Lent and we do things a little differently that I just was off my autopilot. So, I thought that was great too until you just did. Dorley was impressed that the particular word got omitted, which was a great thing. Yes, thank you. Okay, so go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Tend the sick. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Worship complete. Service begin.